Bezrat Hashem. There are many things that we're working on during our life while we're trying to serve Hashem when we really want to we want to commit ourselves to Hashem and we're looking for the right way to do that and usually what the people are doing is trying to follow other people's advice and I can understand that I can relate to it Sometimes your self-confidence, your self-esteem is very shaky and you're doubting yourself because you remember you failed so many times in life. And it's true that the wise telling us you must look for yourself for a teacher, a rabbi, someone holy that will guide you, that will give you the right solution to your problems, that will help you lift you, to take you to higher places than those places that you can achieve by yourself. But Rabbi Nachman of Westlev is saying that humility, anava, must come with wisdom, the dat. The person that just acts humble means pretending <coughs> to be humble and not really being humble, just trying to humble himself under someone else and just actually pretending to be humble and not really being humble that maybe even he doesn't understand what real humility is. He can find himself going to very bad places and even to lose his way because of following righteous people, because of following rabbis, because of trying to do something that seems to be right. But the problem of not counting on yourself and not being who that you really are can become very dangerous while trying to serve Hashem. In many ways, like we said, it's very important that a person will have emunat chachamim, faith, faith in wise people, but we know something amazing that it's written on the first man, on Adam Arishon, that he had a gun, a default, in faith in Chachamim, in the wise people. And how can it be that the first man didn't listen to his rabbi? He was the only one over there, he was the first man. But I heard once a very deep explanation on that, that actually the defect that he had was that he was not believing in himself. Because he heard from Hashem in Barach exactly what is allowed and what not allowed. And he heard it from Hashem. But when the snake came and started arguing with him and, and claiming and, and bringing proofs and evidence to a second theory, so that second opinion start talking to him, start convincing him, pulling him. And why? Only because that he was not counting on himself, that he can really interpret the words of Hashem, and that he is also able to understand Hashem's will. And when the snake that came was so sophisticated and wise and charming and, and came with all of his wisdom, so. Adam Arishon decided to play humble and to listen and to consider it and to think about it and you know, maybe I see what you're saying and that's not real humility. That's not the real will of Hashem. The real will of Hashem is that you will be honest and that you will be strong and that you will find out what the truth is and if you don't know, say, I don't know. And if you need to ask, so say, okay, I want to ask. But you need to be strong. You need to be powerful. You need to have your inner confidence and strength to be who that you are. Hashem said not to touch. No, Hashem didn't say not to touch. Hashem, Hashem said not to eat. Oh, no, we're not eating. That's it. 
when a person is strong enough to believe in himself and to admit in his mistakes, in his lackings, so he becomes powerful. King David, if you open the book of Tehillim, the Psalms and, and, and the prayers of King David, in front of you you're going to stand a person, that's King David, that he was scared, that he was terrified, that he was embarrassed, that he didn't have an advice, that he didn't know what to do, that he was lost, that it was the, the, an exile for him, that he suffered, that he felt rejected, that he was sad and depressed and broken. Hey, we're talking about Mashiach, right? We're talking about the king of, the eternal king of our nation. So what's going on? How can it be? The fact that he was honest with his weaknesses brought him to a level that he was beyond all of those weaknesses. Because he was able to express the truth, to admit, to say, I'm weak. When you're able to say, I'm weak, it makes you strong. And if you're going to deny your weakness and always going to say, no, I'm strong, nothing happened, no, I'm good, all fine, I'm great, I'm... <coughs> then you're weak because you're not dealing with your weaknesses. And you pretend to be something that you're not, so basically you're just a liar. On Moshe Rabbeinu it's written that he was Shafel Vesavlan. Shafel means that he was low, means humble. Vesavlan means that he was able, that he had patience. So I think that it was the Mitzudot David that interprets, but I'm not sure. But one of the righteous people, he explained what it means Shafel Vesavlan that Moshe Rabbeinu had the power, the patience, to accept his lackings. The reasons that he was humble. Why he was humble? Because he saw lackings in himself. When he was checking himself, he saw, okay, I'm lack of this, I'm lack of that, I need Hashem for this, I need Hashem for that. And he was able to accept it with love. He was able to live with all of his lackings. And he was not losing his mind because, oh, I wasn't learning today. Oh, today I missed Mikveh. Oh, this day I didn't do one hour in Vadadut. How can it be? What am I going to do? Today I lost, I missed. All of that Yetzirah is arrogance. Because who you think you are that you're not going to fail? Who you pretend to be that you're not going to lose? Without the Creator that helps you, for sure you're going to fail. <coughs> so if you fail, it's because Hashem decided not to help you. And if Hashem is not helping you, you don't have a chance. So when you're failing, you just need to come to that understanding. Okay, Hashem Barach, He wanted me now to fail. And it's not that Hashem Barach did something wrong. Hashem realized, with His wisdom, that I had to go through a certain clarification, to go deep into a certain understanding, to find something about myself, to find out something about myself, to realize something about my nature, about my manners, my behaviors, my attributes, something that I need to work on. So he, with his wisdom, with his loving kindness, decided to open my eyes, to recognize what I need to work on. So now, if the person is really humble, really happy, and his purpose is to serve Hashem, and really to learn from Hashem, so then those rebukes will not insult him, will not shake his stability. It's just going to increase his desire to learn and to develop. Even after finding himself so ashamed of himself, but recognizing what he needs to work on, he will be so happy, like he found the huge treasure. And he will say, okay, now I learned. Thank you, Hashem, for rebuking me. Like the verse is saying, Et asher yoav Hashem yochiach. That Hashem rebukes the one that he loves. Why he's rebuking you? Because he still got hope from you. He still wants you to succeed. So he's choosing to open your eyes and to communicate with you and to give you a lesson, and to hint you exactly on what you need to work on. 
So a person that needs to work on his humility. So Hashem Yitbarach will show him how arrogant he is. A person that needs to work on his trust in heaven, that Hashem will supply all of his needs and the money, parnasah, whatever. Hashem Yitbarach will show him how far he is from that confidence and how much he really needs to count only on Hashem. So he will take all of those people from him that he was counting on them until now and he will shake his fake stability and by that Hashem will bring him closer and closer to him. So it's a big favor and that's what the, how the Mishnah Bura is opening the explanation on, on, on Or Chaim, on the Shulchan Aruch, that the Mishnah Bura is saying that it's a huge favor for the person that wants to serve Hashem to deal with challenges and with difficulties. It's a huge, huge favor for us that Hashem is doing with us to open our eyes, to let us see what we need to fix. Because without that, we're going to be like blind people walking in the darkness that don't know where we're heading and what we need to do and what's our mission and what we need to work on. The fact that Hashem Yidbarach is playing on our nerves and uh, annoying us and pushing us and stabbing us and rejecting us is waking up the desire of us to come closer to Him even though that sometimes it becomes very hard. But we must know that Hashem Yidbarach is not giving up on us and everything that he is doing got a very deep wisdom like that it's written Sof that when you reach in the end to the conclusion, to the end of what the Hashem planned for you then you see that he had an earlier thought, a plan but for that you need to reach the end now Rabbi Nachman of Westlip is saying that if you see a child now plays with, a, with a, some kind of a toy, a puppet, a doll, or whatever, and he plays with it, now he's not so interested in that toy that he's playing with, with that game. But if now his elder brother will come and gonna take it away from him and gonna start running with it in the, in the house, so that's it. Now it's the mission of his life to bring that toy back to his hands and the fact that he lost that toy brought him to want that toy even more than he wanted it before. Before I thought, okay, it's mine, it's in my pocket. But now when I lost it, now I realize that it was important to me. So that's why Hashem Barach is hiding his face from us. He's hiding his face from us for one reason, that we're going to ask his face, Bakshu Panaita Mid, that we will ask to see His face always. And that's the main thing that we need to do. In every path in your life, in every situation, in every point of your life, in every intersection, you need to ask for the face of Hashem. What it means, the face of Hashem? Face are representing the wisdom. When you show your face to someone, Masbir Panim, you're explaining your face to him means that you are showing your wisdom to him by smiling to him, communicating with him. To the wise people who are saying that they have illuminating face, why they have illuminating face? Because they have that patience and that will to sit with you and to explain to you and to be there for you and to open their heart for you to share with you from their life experience, from their wisdom. For what? That you will find benefit, that you will grow, that you will succeed, that you will enjoy. They care about you. So now, every person that wants to come closer to Hashem Yivaram, the main thing that he needs to do is to look for the face of Hashem in every situation. That it means that in every situation you need to try to learn what Hashem is trying to teach me from that situation. Now I've been fired, now I've been rejected, now I've been insulted, now I found myself doubting something. Okay, what is the deeper wisdom? 
what is the intention of the Creator, what He tried to tell me in that situation. And when you're going to ask for that truth, you will find it. Before you ask for the truth, you cannot find the truth. The truth will be revealed to you only after you will ask for it. Only when you're going to demand it. Only when you're really going to desire it and going to ask for it, then you will be answered. Why? Because if a person is receiving something without wanting it first, so then he cannot appreciate it. He cannot recognize the benefit and, and the greatness of that gift unless he was really needed for that thing. Only a thirsty person can appreciate a cup of water. A satisfied person doesn't need no water. He will drink Pepsi, Cola all of his life. Water, no taste to it. Why? Because he's not thirsty. Only when you're thirsty you know exactly what you're looking for. And then you drink water. Why? Because you're thirsty. Only after walking in the darkness, only after suffering from poverty, only after being bachelor for so many years with no match, with no shidu, only then you have the real vessels to understand what it means to share your life with your soulmate, or to receive money, to have money, to be able to support yourself, whatever, to have a house, to have that, to have wisdom. That's another reason why Hashem Dvarach took all of our generation to such a place that we all lost our mind in a way. That even the Frum people, even the religious people, you ask where is their connection to Hashem? What? Keeping to all mitzvot like, like robots, like droids, like, like soldiers? And Where is the heart? Where is the soul? Just by keeping <laughs> physical obligations, waking up in the morning, going, functioning, doing things with no smile on the faces, with no excitement, with no thrill, with no happiness, with no satisfaction, with no illuminating face, with no shining face. So, what's going on? Something is missing. But people like us that went through so much darkness in their lives and suddenly saw some beam of light, some spark that is coming and disappearing and then walking away and then you try to track it and to follow that light again and then it's showing itself again between the branches and disappears again and you make another step into that forest and you try again and again and it's coming and revealing itself and disappearing again and again and there is only one purpose for that to bring you closer and closer to the understanding that Hashem Bach is always with you if you would receive everything on a silver plate you wouldn't appreciate it even our holy nation when we started our journey as a nation, when we went out of Egypt and we witnessed and experienced such huge miracles, Hashem opened the sea for us and all the ten plagues on, on the Egyptians and the war that was there and more wars with other nations and protecting us and providing everything in the desert and bringing us safe and with no harm to the, to the, to the Holy Land and, and bringing out water from stone and everything you needed, miracles that were beyond our mind, beyond our reach. And still, when we were facing challenges and difficulties, immediately we started whining and arguing and cursing and fighting with our leader and asking, doubting Hashem, and why He took us to the desert, that we're going to die here, or there are no enough graves in Egypt to kill us over there. He took us to kill us in the desert. Well, why? Because really, in those moments, we were not really worthy. We didn't really have the merit to be redeemed. Just Hashem and Barak saw that we were not about to survive, that we cannot handle the exile any longer. Like that it's written, that if Am Israel would stay for one more hour in Egypt, they would all die. It was so contaminated, so impure, the judgments were so hard over there, that Hashem had to rush us out from Egypt. So He redeemed us based on the fact that in the future to come, we will receive the Torah from Am Sinai, that we will go and get inside the Holy Land, that we will keep the mitzvot that depends in the Holy Land, Based on the future, He redeemed us from Egypt. But not based on the merit 
on the vessels that we built over there in Egypt. So, because that we didn't have the vessels to contain the blessing, so when Hashem Yitbarach blessed us, so all of that blessing went down between our fingers. We didn't have the vessels to contain that bounty. So now, when you see that Hashem Yitbarach is available to you, and you know that you can call Him, but you're finding yourself calling and not being answered, so, it's a very foolish thought to think that really Hashem is not accepting your prayers. We just need to understand that Hashem is helping us to strengthen our vessels, to expand our vessels, to make them much more stable, much more strong, that they will have the power to contain the blessing of Hashem. And that is the will of Hashem that we will all receive huge amounts of bounty, of holiness, of purity, that we will come back to be who that we really are in the roots of our souls. From a tree of apples, you will never going to see mandarins growing. Never. Only apples. And we came from those holy roots, from that holy tree, our ancestors, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Vela. That is the tree of our life. And from that tree, only Abraham and Yitzchak and Yaakov, those are the fruits that are growing. That's why your name is Abraham, your name is Yitzchak, your name is Yaakov. That's your name, that's who you are. And women are Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Vela. And you can have many names, but the nature, the real nature of you is to become like that tree that brought you to life. So, we must remind ourselves who we really are and not to fall to that trap of lack of confidence and low self-esteem. So what if you failed? Who didn't fail? You think that Abraham Avinu didn't fail? You think that Yitzhak Avinu didn't fail? Yaakov Avinu didn't fail? Yaakov Avinu found himself losing his wife. He suffered. He went through so many difficulties. He was, he'd been slavered by his his father-in-law and, and brother-in-law, they destroyed him. And he suffered from poverty and almost been killed by his own brother. And he had to be exiled and run away from the fam from his own family. For 14 years he hid in, in, in a cave, only learning in darkness without his father, without his mother that he admired, that he loved them without no friends, and suffered. And then he lost his adorable child, Yosef. And he lost his life when he lost his, his son. And he lost his wife, Rachel, that he loved her so much. And then all of his children are going to Egypt. And then he lost another son over there in prison. And Shimon is over there. And, Naft and, 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 and Naftali, and he's suffering. And, 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 and Binyamin, and, and, and he doesn't know what to do with himself. And, Okay, that's Yaakov. <coughs> and Yitzchak Avinu is suffering. And Abraham Avinu was suffering. And every one of them, looking at himself, checking himself, he is so humble. Hashem is humbling everyone. Hashem is showing Yaakov Avinu, yes, I told you you're complete, but not without me. Hashem promised to Abraham Avinu, I'm going to give you a child, that that child will shine to the world, will be the light of the nations, and... And he will be the one to take and to inherit all the blessings, everything I promised you. And then Hashem is telling him, okay, now you need to take your son and kill him and slaughter him on the, on the holy mountain. Like, and Abraham Avinu is taking that promise, that only guarantee that he had for, for, for his future. He's already 100 years old. What's the chance that he's going to have another child after waiting for, for 80 years to that child to come? And now when he came, he needs to kill him. It's crazy. Hashem is humbling Abraham Avinu and he's testing his faith. And the purpose is only to bring you closer and closer. And we must make sure that those rebukes, those difficulties that we're going through in life, will reject only the husks and the coverings that are covering us and not reject us. Even though that you go through humiliations, even though that you go through downs, through failures, through pains in your life, you must let yourself 
means to remind yourself that it's a lesson that is purifying your soul, that is bringing wisdom to your life, that is bringing you closer to Hashem in Barach and not coming to reject you. So let it rebuke you means let it reject your mistakes, your husks, your lusts, your desires. Let that wisdom penetrate into your heart and teach you the message that it's been sent to teach you. And take that lesson and learn from it and get stronger and more powerful and wiser and love Hashem with all of your heart. Even if He is threatening to take your life, even if He's threatening to take your money, even if He's threatening to take big things from you, listen to the wisdom that is behind those curtains, behind the threats. If now a father is telling his son, I'm going to take your bike, your bicycle, I'm not going to let you go out with your friends, is that the will of the father? That really I'm not going to ride my bicycle? That really I'm not going to go and hang out with, with my friends? That's not his will. Yes, that's what he's saying. But his intention is, why you didn't finish your homework? Why you didn't finish mm, fulfilling your obligations? Why you were not doing what did I asked you to do? It's not that he really doesn't want me to drive my bicycles. No. So Shemit Bach can tell you whatever he's going to tell you. But the intention, the wisdom that is behind it, is what that you need to look for. Is what that we need to look for. So, who will be that wise person that will receive the full message, that will understand the real message of Hashem Yidvah? Only one that his desire is to learn from his father and not to drive his bicycle. If what that you care about is enjoying and going with your friends, so when your father told you, no, that's it, you're done, you're finished, you want to die, you're cursing everyone, you're upset. Why? Because your main in intention, your main purpose now is to hang out with your friends. So now you're going to be destroyed by receiving that refuse, that, 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 that no. And you don't want to because you want to hang out. But if your truth is that you want to learn from your father, so when your father will rebuke you, you're not going to be upset at all. You will just going to be thirsty to understand, what have I done to upset you? Why you need to use those threats to teach me? What was I doing that was so wrong? And then it will take you five minutes to finish your homework and you can go out and play with your friends. There's no problem with that. Because that was not the will of Hashem to prevent us, to stop us from enjoying and being 100% satisfied from life. His biggest pleasure of them all, who bought you those bikes, if not Hashem, if not your father? Who brought you to that situation that you will have those friends to hang out with? Who wants you to be happy more than your father? The only problem is that you rather to just enjoy and you don't understand that you cannot really just enjoy life. So Hashem Yitbarach is trying to guide us to achieve higher wisdom, to bring us to places that we will have purpose to our life, that our life will be meaningful, that our life will be deep and strong and well connected to spiritual root, to spiritual source. And for that Hashem Yitbarach is keep on rejecting us with that intention that we're going to learn, that we're going to understand what we need to fix. And if you don't understand the signs, no harm is done, nothing bad happened. You can talk about that with Hashem. Many people are finding themselves stuck with no words in Hidvodadut. And Hidvodadut, it's the easiest thing of them all. Because really there is no rules to Hidvodadut except of being there with Hashem. So the main thing that you really just need to do is to come to that place that you will be able to open your heart and to talk to Hashem like you talk to your best friend. And from that moment and on, there is only one thing that you need to do and it's to be yourself. And to talk about what that is really bothering you. And even if you found yourself now stuck with no words, on that you can talk. And you can talk about it for hours. 
there's no problem to talk for hours on the fact that you don't have words to talk <coughs> in Itbodadut. Now you came to Itbodadut and you start thinking, okay, what I'm going to pray about, okay, I'm going to pray on this, I'm going to pray on that. One minute and a half, you finish your Itbodadut. And you say, okay, no, I heard I need also to praise Hashem. So now you start praising and another three minutes and that's it. Now, okay, seven, six minutes of Itbodadut. I'm done. I'm, I'm, uh, you start looking for your phone, for something to, to occupy your hand. So, okay. Now you realize, no. For sure I have much more to talk. So talk about that. Say to Hashem Ibarach, listen Hashem, I came all the way here. I'm in the forest. I'm about to talk to you. I'm in the field. I'm in that porch. And I now want to talk to you. But how can it be that for... Two minutes I was talking, and that's it, now I'm stuck. Please Hashem, help me. Give me words to talk. Let me feel that you're here with me. The reason that I'm not talking to you, you can ask yourself, why am I not talking to Hashem? I don't feel that Hashem is with me. Okay, Hashem, I have a problem. I feel that you are not here with me. If you're really here with me, can you please let me feel that? Just talk. You don't need to be righteous to be so close to Hashem. You are close to Hashem because Hashem is close to you. <coughs> and in the moment that you just think about it and realize that, that's it. Your face are in front of each other. You're talking to Him face to face. That's exactly what you need to do. You just need to be open and honest and express your heart. And that's it. And there is no higher level in Avodat Hashem than that moment. On that, Rabbi Nachman of Wesef said that it it's the highest thing of them all. Why? Because all the rest of the things that the person is doing in his life, the reason that we've been commanded to keep those things is to attach us to Hashem. You put fit in to remind yourself that Hashem Barach is between your eyes and between, in, in, your, in front of your heart, that you're going to remember. It's to refresh your memory. Okay, you need to put mezuzah. Why? That you're going to remember that Hashem Barach is guarding you on your house, watching over you when you get inside the house, when you go out from the house, that you're going to remember. You need to learn Torah. Why you need to learn Torah? There is a purpose for it, that you're going to remember what to do to connect yourself to Hashem, always, in every situation, to know exactly how to keep God's will. There is a purpose. But the main divine purpose of all of the obligations is to bring you to know Him, to recognize Him. That's what the Zohar Kadosh is saying, that the purpose of all Torah mitzvot is to know Him, the Blessed One, the source of all blessings, and to recognize Him. And now, it the dude. What is it but the dude? There's another mitzvah from the 613 mitzvot midoraita. It's or mitzvah tatfilah, the obligation to pray from the Bible, or the obligation to do tshuva, to confess, and, and, and to ask forgiveness from Hashem in Barach on our mistakes. So, anyway, the hit bodedut is a certain mitzvah that is unique and different than all the rest of the mitzvot. Why? Because only in that mitzvah, when you are keeping it, you're actually achieving the main purpose that for that purpose all the rest of the obligation been given to us. All the other obligations been given to us that we're going to remember Hashem and going to find Him and recognize Him. <coughs> and now you're standing in front of Him and you can just be with Him. The highest level that David Melech is explaining in the book of Tehillim is to see the pleasant of Hashem and to visit in His place, in His home, in His house, in His place, in His palace. So, just to spend time with Hashem, that's the highest level that the Vida Melech is explaining in his book. So now, when you are doing it Bodadut, there are no separations between you and Hashem, because Hashem is there. Because Hashem Barach is everywhere. Hashem Barach is inside and outside every place in this world. And when your intention is to be with Him, so then you are face to face with Him.
when there are no separations anymore. So there is nothing higher than just to be in that place and to be as honest as you can. That's why Ibadadut is the highest thing of them all. Because in that place you can just be who that you are. And to be who that you are, to be honest and open and clean and innocent in front of Hashem and to think with Hashem and to ask for Hashem and to apologize to Hashem, that's the honesty of the righteous people. That's exactly what the Torah and Mitzvot are coming to teach us, that we need to become honest and nice and polite and generous to be to have manners, to have derech eretz that is before, more important than all the Torah, kadmah la Torah. Before the Torah you need to have the right behavior, to have that way of the land, to know how to behave, how to respect, how to care, how to feel. That's the level of the righteous people, that they made a big deal of attributes, of midot. They were never talking the Shonara, never would say anything bad about no one. They were running after the poor and giving them charity. They were taking care of the poor and helping them out and protecting that widow from the hands of that cruel landlord. And every righteous man was taking care of the weak in his environment, helping and being nice and generous and had patience with everyone and was sitting and explaining for hours and was only smiling to everyone. And because of that, he achieved that huge level that what? that his memory was perfect, and every time he was praying he was being answered, and that many miracles and wonders, and, and great. But how he achieved that level? By working on his midot, by working on his manners, by being nice and polite and loving and generous and kind. And this is something that we can all work on. It's not that you need to finish the shas to be nice. It's not a guarantee that the people that finish the Shas, now they are the nicest people on earth, right? I saw some people that finished Shas that it seems more like the Shas finished them <laughs> before they finished the Shas. Okay, so he was sitting and learning and learning and learning. So I can just appreciate him for not being in the streets. Like, that was, thank you. I'm happy that the Bet Nidrash was keeping you away from us. It's good. There are people that their intention is so pure when they're learning Torah, so they are, the Torah is uplifting them, the Torah is bringing them to amazing places, like that it's written, that if the person got them married, means purify themselves, zacha, naset lo sam chayim, so then the Torah becomes the potion of life for him. It will bring him to life, it will teach him and give him the right, clear, most purest wisdom and tools how to succeed in life, how to become a better person, and how to work on himself. He's going to bring out the right conclusions from the learning. But if the person doesn't have that merit, and he is in the level of lo zacha, having purified himself enough, so then the Torah becomes to him to be as a lethal poison. Naset lo sam mavet, lethal drug that kills him. So what a person can do? If you will go and learn Torah now, that person, it's going to destroy him. He will go back home and he will see the lackings of his wife and his friends and his family and his children are not functioning and everything is wrong and he's not happy and always upset and always angry. And the Torah is saying that you're not allowed to be angry. And the Torah is saying that you're not allowed to be sad and you're not allowed to be depressed and you're not allowed to, to rebuke no one before you're going to fix yourself completely and on and on and on. And he's failing in all of that. Why? Because he was learning Torah. Because now he thinks that his kitchen must be the most kosher kitchen in the world and his wife, she needs to be the most modest woman in the world. Why? Because he's holding himself that he is such a Talmud Chacham, a genius. But the truth is that you're so far and you're not even accepting it and not even understanding the kindness of Hashem Barach for locking you in the Beit Midrash to protect us from you. And you don't get that message. And so that's why Hashem Barach is, uh, is, is hiding His face from you, because you're not realizing how lucky you are. 
that Hashem is Barak was really protecting the world from you. And that's reality. That's reality. The person needs to understand the truth. If you see that you're damaging, that you're insulting, that you're hurting, that you're embarrassing, that you're destroying people's lives, so the best thing for you to do is to stay away from the world and to stop hurting people. And, and then it's going to be a mitzvah for you to disappear and to go and to <coughs> look for yourself in the world. Thank God, the Shemit Bar helped me that uh, I'm able not to mention names. Once I gave a class, and in that class I explained how important it is for a person to look for a, a worthy, important, real righteous leader to lead him, and not to follow liars and, and, and phony rabbis that are just seeking for honor and respect. And then I explain that you need to check with yourself what are the results of you sitting and hearing a class from a certain rabbi. And I said, if in the end of that class you find yourself happier and with a stronger will to serve Hashem, and you have more desire to go and respect people, and you have more will to, to be humble and to listen to your friends, and, 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 and you see that you, you, your, your midot has been improved, you, you learned something good. So great, you need to follow that rabbi. But if you find yourself in the end of the class that you're now scared and upset and stressed from the rebukes and, and, and from the anger of, of, of that rabbi, so don't, don't go to those classes anymore, don't learn. And then when I finished explaining that long explanation, I said, and okay, now, you know, I didn't mention no name, right? I didn't say no name of no rabbi. But if in that time that I was explaining for you to stay away from a certain rabbi that is destroying your life, so if in that time of my explanation to you, you had a certain name that was crossing your mind while I was talking and I didn't say anything. I was just giving an example on one person. So if there is that person for you and he crossed your mind while I was explaining, so stay away from him. <laughs> and I didn't say anything just for your own good that you will be happy if he is your enemy. So don't go to his classes. Don't watch his classes anymore. He's not building you. And you came to that understanding. I didn't say anything. You brought him into my class. I didn't invite him. He was inside your mind. And me? I don't even know who you're talking about. I know who I need to stay away from and who I need to come closer to. I know I need to come closer to myself. That's what I need to know. That's what I know. I know... I'll teach you something in faith now. Now, I wanted to tell you, that's what I know, that I need to come closer to myself. But Hashem Barach made me mistake in my tongue. And instead of telling you, that's what I know, I said, that's what I need to know. I told you, again I'm going to explain to you slow, I said to you that I know about myself that I need to come closer to myself. And then I wanted to tell you that is what that I know. That's what I wanted to say. But Hashem Barach confused me and put an extra word in my line. And instead of saying that is what that I know, I said, that is what that I need to know. You can watch it on Facebook. Now it's live, but later you can see it and watch it over and over. So, also on YouTube, and SoundCloud, and Twitter, <laughs> <laughs> and WhatsApp. Okay, so now the thing is that Hashem Barach, why he made me mistake in that, to clarify for me that that is the right thing. 
I said that I know that I need to come closer to myself. But Hashem added another word to that line, and He said through me, that is what it, I need to know. He was justifying my will. He shown to me that really that is what it, I really need to do, to come closer to myself. So that's an evidence for me that what it, I was saying was right, and I'm learning it even from my mistakes. Because Hashem Barach made me mistake in that line. And now you can learn from that. To understand how important it is for the person to come closer to himself, to accept yourself, to accept who that Hashem made you, and not always to try to change. If a rabbi or someone always coming and rebuking you and telling you you need to change, you need to do this, you need to do that, Hey, I need to change. You're right. I need to change, but I need to change. So first of all, where is that I? I must accept myself and then to work on my true self to uncover it and to become who that I really am. Because now I'm not who that I really am. Why? Because I'm afraid. So I'm attacking and I'm arguing and I'm being offensive and I'm insulting and I'm rebuking and I'm attacking. And okay, I'm not my true self because I'm scared because I went through so many humiliations and I'm afraid to feel those shames again and I don't want to be hurt again. And okay, so now I, be, I wore my, 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 uh, my um, armor, and now I'm defending myself by being funny, by being hard, by rebuking, by insulting, by attacking, by not getting into no conversations that will discuss certain issues because I'm protecting myself. But why am I protecting myself? Because I am sensitive, because I feel weak, because I'm afraid to do what? To be who that I really am. To be that just friendly, nice, sympathetic person that just wants to do good. And I'm so afraid to be that one. Why? Because they were laughing at me on this, and they were rebuking me on that, and she was saying this, and they were saying that. And, and that's how I decided to be tough, and to be strong, and not to open myself, and not to express. And Okay. And then you find yourself that you haven't told your wife for 20 years that you love her. And it's crazy. And it's sick. And a woman can be in the same situation. That for 20 years she finds herself blocked and locked in her own prison, cannot share, cannot talk. But that is our mission. To remove those bars and to get out from that spiritual prison, emotional prison of ours, and really to be who that we are. And just to express our soul. And to go out to liberty, to, to freedom. Really, to be free. The verse is saying, "V'karati lachem dro." On the redemption, Hashem is saying, "I'm going to set you free. I'm going to make each and every one of you free people, free persons, just to be who that you are, to use your free will, and to be who that you are, and to express the light of Hashem that He planted inside of you, because He gave you wisdom, and He gave you talents, and He gave you." memory and he gave you many things and you just need to use them we just need to learn how to express the gifts that the shaman Barak gave us we don't need to be different we don't need to be huge we don't need to be great we are great the huge thing that you can achieve in your life is that you're going to be who that you are that's huge Huge, it's not to be huge, it's to be. That's huge. Just to be who that you are. And then you can be honest, then you can really talk all, all, all your problems and, and share and to find the right answers and, and to be answered. Because when you're who that you are, you can stand up. A person asked me, if in, in, in a certain time from now you will come and, and you're going to have to talk in front of, let's say, 3 million people, or on national TV, 200 million people. Are, are you able to do that, he asked me. I told him, yes, for sure. So that person immediately said, I'm not able to do it. So I told him, why? I'm not going to think about the fact that I'm talking to 200 million people. I'm just going to say the truth. 
when you say the truth, when you're not lying, you're not acting, you're not performing in front of 200 million people. You just say the truth. So then, who cares how many people are going to watch you? You just said the truth. If it's the truth, so it must be said. And then there's no problem to say the truth in front of 8 billion people. Why? Because it's the truth. You don't need to plan and to work on yourself and to prepare yourself. You just need to be honest. You just need to say what that you have in your heart right now and just to be truthful to your truth, to the truth of Hashem, to what that you believe in. So when you are honest and you just become who that you are, you don't have problems in life anymore because you're ready to deal with every challenge, with every difficulty. You're facing reality and you're ready to work and you're not afraid from the labor and from the effort and you're ready. And you can accept the shames and the rebukes because it's a lesson. And you're here for the wisdom. You want to learn, you want to grow, you want to develop. And that's the will of Hashem, that we all going to become like that, warriors, brave people, honest people, that are ready to do whatever they need to do for the truth. Even if the truth means that you're going to have to sacrifice some hours, or many hours, or months, or years of your life to a certain goal, that Hashem Baruch is opening your eyes to see and to recognize that's the main goal of your life, at least as for now, for those couple of years, for those uh, 10 years, until the kids will be going to grow up, until the family, whatever. If that's what you need to go through, so you are ready to go through that. When? When you have a purpose, when you want to do that. When your will is one with the divine will of Hashem, and you're ready to nullify yourself to Him completely. Like whatever He wants from you, you're ready to do. Now, seven Ishma, you say, whatever you're going to command me, I'm going to do. And how are you going to know what is the commandment? You must be honest. You must be a person of truth. So if someone is demanding, how are you going to know if you should help your wife now shopping or you need to go to Beit Midrash and learn Torah? That's mitzvah midoraita. That is a mitzvah midoraita. How are you going to tell? You need to ask yourself, what is the truth? If now, let's say, I'm not going to go to the yeshiva to learn Torah. From which reason I'm not going to go to the yeshiva? Because my wife, she needs my help. Okay, but is it because I don't want to learn Torah? No, I do want to learn Torah, but my wife, she needs my help. Okay, great. Now, if I'm going to refuse to help my wife and I will go to learn in the yeshiva. So, what is the reason that I'm going? Because I really need to learn Torah? Or that because I don't want to help my wife? When you're going to come to the right conclusion, now you can choose. And choose. If really it's only because you want to learn Torah and you feel that that's the main mission of your life, great. I'm not going to tell you don't do it. But really check inside what's the real reason that you went and learned Torah. If it's really because of your desire to learn Torah and you really think that your wife, she can handle it and she's really going to be okay and you're confident that Hashem will help her and you're not leaving her by going and learning Torah, just you go because you love her, because that it's important to both of you to... Great, go, no problem, if you're in that place. But if really you're not that honest and you just try to remove the obligation and the yoke from your shoulders and to go and hang out with your friends in the, in the air condition over there in some Beit Midrash, or at least just to be alone for a couple of hours, so it's kind of problematic. You were not honest with yourself while choosing going and learning Torah. So how you want that Torah to purify you? How you want that Torah to give you wisdom? Now you're coming back from the Beit Midrash and your wife, she's not happy with the Torah that you brought home. So what? She's a stubborn woman. She's a refusing woman. She's a bad woman. She doesn't appreciate the Torah learners or the Torah itself. No, you're just a lousy husband. And that's why she can't stand you. <laughs> so deal with reality and work on yourself and become a better person. And then she won't mind that you're going to learn Torah. And also I'm going to tell you another secret. You're going to learn much more Torah because you're going to have much more blessing. 
And even if you're going to spend less hours in the Beit Midrash, the wisdom that you will buy from Hashem, the deep understandings, the wisdom that you're going to find inside of your soul will be so great, so huge, so that, that people that learn Torah for years cannot compare themselves to you. That's it. I will tell you what the Degmara is saying, but uh, I caused enough damage to myself. But the truth is that I'm not afraid of no damage, so I'm going to say it. <laughs> I don't care. The... Rabbi Nachman in Likutem Oran is saying that the peak of humility is when the person is able to say on himself what that Moshe Rabbeinu said on himself. I am the most humble person in the world. More than all the rest of the people that were alive in, in that generation. Without being arrogant, without being proud about that thing. He could write down those words, me, Ani, Moshe, Rabbeinu, the son of Yocheved and Amram. I am the most humble person in the world. And he didn't care about it. It didn't mean anything to him. Because he realized that's the truth. And it doesn't make me better than you if I'm more humble than you. I'm just more humble than you. It's reality. Like, let's say now I have $2,000 in my pockets and you have only one penny. So it doesn't make me better than you that I have $2,000. But I do have $2,000 in my pocket. So it's not a secret. It's real. I do have it. And you don't, but I'm not better than you because that I do. But I do. I do have them. So Moshe was humble. Okay. So what I wanted to say is that me, about myself, I am alive evident for what that I just told you. And you can see that from my classes, from my speeches. I was learning in yeshiva. I was opening and closing many, many books. But I'm telling you that the wisdom that I achieved, and that's the wisdom that you're now enjoying from in my classes, is not what that I read in the books. It's from my understandings between the lines. That's where I really bought my wisdom from. That is what that I'm sharing with you. Not the Midrashim and the verses that I remember and all the Gemarot that I remember. It's not it. It's the will of Hashem that hides itself between the lines. So, other people that sat with me in the same Bet Midrash and reading from the same books and finished the same Asechtot and might even finish more, but their heart was not aimed in the same way that mine was, they didn't receive what did I read between the lines? They didn't came out with the right conclusions that I came out from the limud with. Why? Because they were busy in the sugiya itself. They wanted to understand the words of the Tana. And I'm not saying that it's wrong, but I was looking for the will of Hashem. So I found it. You're going to find what that you are looking for. That's what you're going to find. So if you really want to be close to Hashem, you're going to find that. And you can find it choosing cucumbers in the grocery store, in the supermarket. Because Hashem is with you in every place. You don't need to find Hashem only over there, in the highest places of them all. And no, that's not only where Hashem is at. Hashem is with you. Hashem is working with you. And if you want really to know about Hashem, so look for Hashem. And if you're really going to look for Hashem in every situation, you're going to find Him. Now, if your wife is telling you, hey, I need your help, I cannot handle it by myself, and you have that obligation to go and learn Torah, great, I'm telling you, there is no clear answer what you should do. The only answer is, that you should look for Hashem's will. And when you're going to look for it, you're going to know what to choose. And then you're going to also know that you chose right. Because you're going to see blessing in your life. Even by going to the grocery store three times a day. You're going to find true happiness. You're going to achieve completion. You're going to receive the real yoke of heaven. You're going to feel that Hashem is walking with you. 
And you will find yourself able to answer to every question and to know the right advice for every person and to find out exactly what Hashem wants from you only because you were looking for Him, because you were really searching for Him. And that is a gift that is ready and served and offered to everyone with no difference of how many pages you learned and how many hours you sacrificed. Just depends in the purity of your heart. In your holy desire to commit yourself to the truth, to the divine truth, to the truth of Hashem, what Hashem you want from me. Not what I want to accomplish, not what I want to achieve, not how I want to be treated or respected or honored. Just what really is your will? A loyal soldier is a soldier that is ready to go and clean the toilets and to throw away the filth and the, and, and the waste because that's what the commander commanded him and told him to do. And he will go with the same smile to keep that job and that obligation like to go and fight or to receive the medal in the end of the war. He won't care dying during his job and doing his mission and he won't care about anything because he's got only one thing in front of his eyes and it's to do the right thing. And if you want to do the right thing, so you will do the right thing. You will find a way to do the right thing. The main thing that we need to work on is on our will, to aim our hearts to Hashem's will, to listen to Him, to understand His message, to follow His advice, to listen to the divine will that is good in all ways of good, that is better than anything else in this world, to throw your wisdom and to become one with the divine will, to nullify yourself completely to that, to become one with Him. There are many, many stories of Moshe Rabbeinu or Abraham or Yitzchak or Yaakov or the rest of the righteous people that were doing other things except of learning Torah 24 hours in a row. No. They were doing many other things. They were also respecting their wives and talking with them. They were also spending time with their children and teaching them not only Torah, just also how to fish and how to run and how to walk and how to talk and how to use knife and fork and how to be polite and how to have manners. They were spending hours and hours on educating their friends and making everyone satisfied and happy and strong and gave from their time, from their wisdom, from their talents to everyone that needed something. That's how you become pure. That's how you become righteous. Not by achieving and achieving. Your achievements will be a result to your honesty, to your dignity, to your kindness. To how much you want to respect other people and to give from what that Hashem gave you. That you feel gratitude to Hashem on His kindness to you and you just feel like sharing and giving it to others. By revealing that natural generosity of your heart, you become one with the Creator. You make wonders like that He was doing with you. And He will give us all the power to go and to make His name great and to make His name famous. And, 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 and precious and, and, and dear in the eyes of all of his children. Amen. You can hear that sound. Amen. Thank you very much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.